Hi, welcome to the part 19 of this video series. These are all real certification questions. The chances of clearing the exam going through this video series is very high. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you like my videos. For questions 1 to 95, please refer the previous parts of this video series. There is a whole playlist available with so many videos. Please refer those. Let's look at this question. There are three questions here. The first one says, AD can be used to manage access for on-prem applications. See, always remember, AD works both the ways. It works for cloud applications as well as on-prem applications. So the answer here is yes. This is a thumb rule. Always remember that. The second question talks about AD if it provides single sign-on. Yes. AD provides single sign-on. AD has a feature called ADFS, Active Directory Federation Services, which is used to provide single sign-on. So if you see this documentation, it clearly talks about how to provide a single sign-on with AD. You can refer this. The last question is talking about, can you register iOS devices in AD? Yes, you can. So if you search the documentation, there is a whole uh, answer given by someone which says how to do a step-by-step -step registration so this is the final answer let's lock this answer and move forward now let's look at question 97 if you have referred to the previous part there was a similar question now in the exam you might see scenarios where the same question comes in different ways to trick you okay so let's look at this question. What it is talking about is where you can find the personal data collected by Microsoft. And you want to know how Microsoft uses the data and what the data is used for. For example, you as a user have an Azure subscription and you want to understand whatever, like I uploaded a file in blob storage and then I created a VM, I processed that data in the file so if you want to know what is microsoft doing with this out of these which ones should you choose the first question the first option it refers to addendum like we discussed addendum see this is always between the client and azure microsoft not between normal user like you and me and Azure. I gave an example in the previous part that suppose GE has a contract with Microsoft Azure. Then there would be a data protection addendum between the two parties between GE and Microsoft Azure. Now the option B that is the online service terms this if you see this these are the service terms you can go ahead and read this this just talks about online services that you are using it is an information about that now the third one that is the privacy statement this looks to be the potential answer see this is an example of the Microsoft privacy statement what it is telling you is it explains the personal data Microsoft processes how Microsoft processes it and for what purpose and this is exactly what our question needs right hence C is the right answer but let's still look at D that is the security center See, one thing you should note for the exam, now there is no security center. You read the statement security center and Azure Defender are now called Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Okay. And the primary purpose is to track the security posture of your infrastructure. It helps you protect against cyber attacks and helps you to streamline the security management. In future, Slowly, in the certification exam, you should see security center fading away and the latest term should be used. And what is the latest term? I repeat, it's Microsoft Defender for Cloud. 
so here goes our answer let's lock this this one there are four options here and what it is asking is you need to enable users to authenticate to multiple applications using sign on single sign on SSO buddy what does our thumb rule says whenever you see SSO I'll give you a stupid analogy whenever you see SSO blindly select this active directory blindly and move to the next answer I will still explain you why the remaining three are wrong security center like I explained in my previous question there is no security center from 4th of April 2022 it is now called Microsoft Defender for cloud and this change happened 4th of April 2022 and security center is wrong let's move key vault key vault is used to store keys for encryption so what it means is it is safeguarding the cryptographic keys and other secrets like passwords and so on is that the need of this question the question talks about SSO key vault is not for SSO see this is wrong let's talk about security groups in Azure if you have a requirement to filter the network traffic to and from the Azure resources in the Azure virtual network, then you use security groups. The question is talking about SSO and not about not allowing access to certain countries or certain locations or certain people. This is the right answer. Lock it always remember the thumb rule the moment you see SSO blindly choose this now information protection what does it protect it protects documents and emails you saw this so this is the right answer it will not it is not linked with network traffic so this is wrong network traffic for encryption has nothing to do with network traffic because when it is talking about information encryption Azure storage account there is a different mechanism for encrypting the storage account and SQL databases usually they are done through key vault it is storing cryptographic keys and not used for this purpose so this is the final answer let's move forward The last question for this part so what is the story of this question the story goes this way you have a subscription and you have Windows 10 devices hundred of them okay. now you need to ensure that only users whose devices have the latest security patches installed can access the AD integrated applications what should you do so let's draw the analogy you have VM Azure VM and you have a SQL database Azure SQL and they are connected through Active Directory now you have these Windows devices here hundreds of them and what you want to do is you want uh, only those devices to connect to these applications who have the latest security patch that is important so you have four options let's go one by one conditional access policy so this is what we do with conditional access it extends an organization's network to include a user and device identity so this is exactly what we are doing we are extending whatever is there on Azure to the other devices and what we want to do is we want to use identity driven signals as a part of access control decision this is exactly what we need for our answer so the first option option a looks correct but let's scan through other options option B talks about bastion what is bastion if you want to do RDP that is remote desktop access or SSH to access the virtual machines without any exposure through public IPs then you use this it will not help you 
to identify and make a decision hey, this guy does not have uh, the security the latest security patch i'll not allow this guy to get in so bastion is wrong in this respect let's check option c that's firewall see a firewall is similar to what you have usually in your corporates if you're working for any it company or any corporate they have firewalls it's similar to that it helps you filter and threat intelligence fields directly it helps you filter those that stuff so primarily the purpose here is the firewall is a cloud native and intelligent network firewall security service it will just block the unauthorized access it will not block if your security patch is not latest it will not do that kind of logic firewall does not have logic to understand whether you have the latest security patch or not let's talk about azure policy it is just used to enforce organizational standards for example if you have you have a compliance standard that any of my vms that anybody can create can only be of this class okay it cannot be of a large class to keep control on my cost you can have that policy created and that is your organizational standard but org policies will not help you do this kind of check this kind of check is only possible in conditional access policy this is the documentation which proves this answer is right so this is the final answer please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you like my videos this brings us to the end of part 19 see you in the next part this playlist there is one more playlist and this playlist together guarantees your success rate to 100 percent for az 900 certification exam all of those questions are relevant still relevant